Welcome back to the Canvas Boot Camp. In this simple exercise you can learn to put JSON objects, arrays, and loops to work in your Canvas application. JSON objects, which can also be recognized by some programmers as associative arrays, are a great way to group and keep track of many objects as individual entities on the Canvas that can possess any properties you wish. And packing those JSON objects into arrays makes it simple to add or remove them from a particular group of objects from the canvas when needed. Let's demonstrate this concept with some code. I have an empty canvas here and what I'm going to do is create an empty array called buildings. So I'll just make that equal to an empty array. Now I'll put the first JSON object into it by opening and closing curly braces. And within the curly braces I put all the data for my JSON object and each one is going to be a building. So the first property I'll put in place is going to be the ID of the building. And then I'll put colon and the first one I'll just call house. Now the next property we're going to put in place in this JSON object is going to be the X position because each building is going to need an X position, a Y position, a width, and a height. So we'll put in colon and the X position I want is 100. Then I'll put in a comma for my next property will be Y. That's the Y position for where it's going to live. And for this first one I'll make that 100 Y as well. Now let's put in a comma. We want the width and that will make 50. Then we're going to need the height and that will be 50 as well. And then the very last property will be the background. So I'll name that BG for short. And for the house I'm going to make that a magenta color. So you see what we have is a JSON object and there's only one in this array so far but we can put multiple objects in this array. What I'm going to do is just put a space here and a space here. I'm going to highlight the whole JSON object here. Press Control C and then put a comma here then go down one line and indent to the first object and then paste in. Then what we'll do is take this closing bracket here and put it down to right there. So now you can put as many objects that you want inside of your buildings array and just make sure that the last object doesn't have a comma. So let's say if I put one more, if I want to put one more in there, I want to have to put a comma and then the last one. So when the last one doesn't get a comma, but all the ones that precede the last one, make sure you put a comma in place. Now this one I'll just call the grocery. This one we'll call post office. We've got to make sure they're not all stacked on top of each other when they get rendered to the canvas. So we'll put this at an X position of 200. We'll put the post office at an X position of 300. Make sure we change the background colors. We'll make this one green and this one orange. Now all we have to do is run a simple for loop over that array to render all of these things to the canvas in just a few lines of code. And maybe if we had 50 objects in here, we wouldn't have to render them each separately. We can just use the for loop to render them all at once. All right, now I'll show you what a loop like that would look like. So we type in for, open, close parentheses, opening curly brace, and put in our closing curly brace. And in our for loop, we're going to need the var i, which is equal to zero, semicolon. Then we need to stipulate if i is less than our buildings array dot length, semicolon, and then i plus plus, which will increment the i variable. So we're just saying while i is less than buildings.length, this for loop is going to run. And this uh, loop starts at an index of zero, and it's going to run over the length of the buildings array. Now what I'll do inside of the loop is I'll create a variable that will just represent each building as they come pouring through the loop. So I'll just call it b, and that's going to be equal to the buildings index in the loop. And we can just put i within the brackets. So the first time this loop runs, this B is going to represent the house. Then the second time this loop runs, this B is going to represent the grocery store. Then it will represent the post office as each comes passing through the loop. So we go down one line, we say ctx.fillstyle is equal to b.bg. We access the bg property here for each of those. Then we say ctx.fillrect open close parentheses semicolon and the fill rect method gets x y width and height parameters now all we have to do is say b dot x building dot y building dot width and building dot height if we run this in our favorite browser we see that we get all of our elements placed on the canvas that are in the buildings array 
So that's the basics of working with JSON objects inside of an array. And it's very simple to access any index in this buildings array to splice elements out of it to remove them or push new items into it during the runtime of your applications. And we'll be working with JSON objects a little bit more in later lessons within the bootcamp.